you take the story of Scripture, see it as it really was intended in the beginning to be seen, that your own wonderful human imagination is the God spoken of in Scripture. And by him all things were made, and without him was not anything made that is made. Start right in this room. You're wearing clothes. You're, wearing, you're sitting on chairs. You're in a house. Everything here was first only imagined. The clothes you're wearing, the chairs on which you're seated, the building that now houses you, everything here was first only imagined. And then it becomes an objective fact. So objective reality is solely produced through imagining. Now you want to objectify something entirely different from what you have so far. Well now, change the imaginal act. To attempt to change circumstances before I change the imaginal activity is to struggle against the very nature of things. I can't do it because my imaginal activity is producing the objective realities. And I can't change that objective fact until I change what is causing it. And the cause is an unseen imaginal activity. As we are told, he brings things that are not seen and calls them as though they were seen and they become seen. Things that are now seen were made out of things that do not appear. That's what we are told in the book of Hebrews. What you now see, it was made out of things that do not appear. Well, if that is a fact, and scriptures had it now for centuries and centuries as fact, well then, put it to the test. Challenge, yes, challenge the scripture. As your thought in scriptures are challenging. Do you not realize that Jesus Christ is in you? Examine yourselves and see whether you're holding to the faith. Well, test him. Test him and see. If he is in me and he does all things, I'm going to test him. Well, I've tested him over and over and over and found him faithful. I dared at moments in my life to assume that I had what reason told me I did not, and my senses denied it, but I dared to assume that I had it. And it happened. It came out of the nowhere. It happened. So I taught that principle to others. They applied it, and it happened. But strangely enough, after someone becomes a little bit better off than they were, they reflect upon it, and because it always happens in a perfectly normal, natural manner, they say, oh, well, it would have happened anyway. And then they go sound to sleep again. You can give someone a, a sedative, and you try to awaken them, and for a moment they're alert, seemingly alert. And while you're talking to them, you sound to sleep again. That's humanity. They're dreaming this dream of life, and they see the fruit of what they've imagined and deny that their imagination produced it. So they go sound to sleep again, back upon the negative state. But I'm asking you who come here and persist in coming to observe what you are doing in the course of 24 hours. You're not alert 24 hours, but take, say, 16 hours. If you give eight hours to sleep, well, take 16 hours and try to observe what you are imagining. And if you perchance you catch yourself imagining what you do not wish to experience, stop it. Stop it right there and then and don't give it an extra second. It may be you're in the midst of an emotion and you'd like to complete the emotion and tell him off completely. Don't. Stop it. Break it. And that causes a, a sort of a mental, well, a mental abortion. A mental miscarriage. If you break it without exploding the emotion. So feel after him, and you'll find him. That's what he told the Athenians. But he pointed out all the objects of their worship. And every object he pointed out was something they themselves had made with their hands, and then worshipped it. I can see it now when I was a young man in the dancing world. She was a young girl, a pretty young girl. And she had a little figurine of what she called the Holy Mother. And before she took the, the stage, she would kiss it. The whole thing was just simply brilliant raid from her kisses. And she really thought that gave her success. She kissed it and smothered it with kisses, and on the stage she would go, and that was her little object of her worship. She thought that really was the Holy Mother. 
I mean, I tell you, without any criticism of the thing, most of these things are made by people who call themselves artists and are so far removed from any concept of being an artist. They're monstrous things made by the millions. Not by good artists at all, but she had her little one and sitting on top of the stage at her little dresser and she would smother it with kisses and then dashed on the stage and she danced. I went to a party once. These boys, one was a priest or he's going to be a priest and he quit to join the war. The other, they're all went into the army. One came out deaf. One came out with one foot missing above the knee and an arm. And this one who was the priest, or was to be the priest, he came out with something else. Didn't go back into the priesthood. But they all wore their St. Christopher medals when he dived into the pool at their home. And they attributed their recovery, or their so-called coming out of the army, to St. Christopher. That was before St. Christopher was demoted. He's now demoted. The Pope just said there was no such a thing as St. Christopher. But now, before that, they attributed the entire thing to that. One with a foot missing, arm missing, one deaf, and one with TB, and that is St. Christopher. He didn't do a good job. But they actually were completely, I said to my wife, I said, darling, suppose they know what I teach. Suppose they have heard what I could. Would they have me here? Oh, she has certainly to have you here, because as far as they're concerned, you aren't saved. You couldn't be saved. You are a Protestant. So how could you be saved? They loved my father dearly, said my wife. Loved him more than they loved their own people. But he couldn't be saved because he was a Protestant. Therefore, it doesn't really matter what you do. So don't be concerned if they knew that you were teaching they wouldn't even pass an opinion because it doesn't matter. Only what they have been taught to believe is true. And that's the only truth. Therefore, enjoy the day. So I did. I enjoyed the day and observed all this nonsense. So I'm telling you, your own wonderful human imagination is God. There is no other God. If you think there's another God, then you've got two gods. And you start with two, you're going to have four. And four is going to give you eight. And eight, sixteen. And then you have millions of gods. There's only one God. Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. And that God is I am. That's his name forever and forever and forever. And when you say I am, you're actually announcing the fact that you are imagining that is imagination. That's God. And it's the human imagination. And it is the eternal body of the Savior. And the only Savior is the Lord God. I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. And besides me, there is no Savior. So the Jesus of the new is the Lord God of the old. And where is he? In man. He gave us not the spirit of this world, he gave us a spirit of himself. And that spirit of himself is in man as man's own wonderful human imagination. Now let us go into the silence.